I like to make my own paints because of the quality I can get. There are lots of colors to pick from. I like the economy and availability of the paint. I can count on making the amount I want when I need it. I'm not limited to what's in stock at the stores due to supply chain hiccups. And casing is relatively easy to make. Casing was a fine art medium since the 11th century. It's water soluble, applies like an oil or acrylic, or thinned like a watercolor or gouache. It dries quickly and is permanent. I prefer it over gouache as a main medium because it doesn't lift the layer underneath, making it easy to add glazes quickly. And finally, it's a favorite for underpaintings in all mediums, even oil. It doesn't require plexiglass and framing either unless you're painting on paper. I work on arches paper and hardboard prepared with pastel primer. Sometimes I mount linen to it. It's the best medium I've used for plain air painting. I'm adding a little water to the muller before placing it on the mixture. I keep it flat against the plate. I'm gently applying a little pressure in a circular motion, slightly lifting to include the larger globs of paste. I apply more pressure and the molar glides easy. Some pigments are going to be grittier than others, the ochres and the umbers. The gritty rock pig pigments will need to be molded with patience. The cadmiums are smoother. They don't require a lot of effort to mold, and the mixture is quickly uniform and shiny with no lumps or bumps. If required, check your molar for buildup of paste around the edges and scrape off the surface a few times during the process. I work on a designated craft towel so I don't have any bits of pigment surprising me later on something. I soak my painting rags and pigment making towels in a designated dish tub overnight with laundry soap. Rinse well and air dry before they are added to the laundry. The molar glides smoothly now. Uh, don't expose your paint too long in the air or it can dry out. Use your mister if necessary. The consistency is starting to feel real smooth. It's buttery, slick, and shiny. There's no grittiness under the molar, and there's a uniform thickness throughout the mix. As a pastel artist, I rarely had the use for this bright a red in my landscapes. I kept a crayon around for painting flowers. Otherwise, I had trouble overdoing this color and often would ruin a painting by dabbing it about. But there's no such thing as a bad color and later I found uses for it to quiet the limey greens by glazing. I could use violet or cad red safely in small amounts. My challenge was because of the colors that my palette swung towards the orange-blue to yellow-purple complements. Now that I'm mixing colors in casing painting, I find lots of applications for cad red. I like to make other colors with it, like a rich brown, by adding phthalo green. I test my colors against others in my palette on a separate book of color charts to find the potential of those mixes with the colors that I use a lot. Now take a swath of pigment to test on the recipe card. Without diluting it, transfer off the palette knife onto the card, and then take a boar bristle brush with some water and blend the mixture in a second area. Here I'm continuing without a break in the color. And with more water, add to the brush, make a graduated wash adding a final amount of water to a very thin wash.
Let's check our test strip. It's dry, so I can get a close look at how the paint will act in practical application. It has no streaks in the washes. There's a smooth blending in the dilution. That means the mixture is well mold. In the thickest area that was applied with the palette knife, there's no cracking. If there was, that would mean there was too much emulsion. If nothing rubs off, it means there's enough emulsion for cohesion. No, cre no streaks, no cracking, doesn't rub off. Success. I hope you enjoyed watching me make cadmium red light. Maybe you found inspiration in making your own. Come see more techniques and tips on krentzjohnson.com. Paint smart and thanks for watching.